In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of Elastic Audio. In the other videos, I'm going to focus on the individual instruments and their uses with Elastic Audio. This one, I just want to focus on the basics. So when you think of Elastic Audio, just think of a rubber band or a piece of taffy. You can stretch it, you can squish it, you can do whatever you want to do with it, and you can treat your audio the same way. You could use it for changing the timing of drums or percussion or pretty much any instrument you could think of. And you could also change the tempo of the entire song to be faster and slower than you originally recorded it, just by stretching it and pulling it. It allows you to treat audio like MIDI, so you can get really creative with it. And now in Pro Tools 8, they've added elastic pitch, so not only can you change the timing of the sounds, you can change the pitch of the sounds too. It's pretty powerful. Now to use elastic audio, you have to turn it on. And the way to do that is right over here in the edit window. You'll see all the different algorithms for using elastic audio. You have polyphonic, which is what you use for piano, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, anything that's polyphonic. Rhythmic, which is for drums, percussion, loops, things like that. Monophonic, which is great for vocals, bass guitar, uh, mono synths, anything that's monophonic, obviously. Then you have vary speed, which works like a tape machine. If you speed the song up, your pitch will go up. And if you slow the song down, the song will sound slowed down. It can be kind of fun. So because we're doing drums, I'm going to choose rhythmic. It might take a few minutes for your session to be analyzed. This is already analyzed, so it went pretty quickly. So if you want to see what's going on, you go right here and you switch it to analysis. Here's where you can see that Pro Tools made an event marker for every single transient. Getting real close. You see that every single transient has an event marker right before it. Even some extra ones. Don't worry so much about the extra ones, though. Now, if you wanted to tweak any of them, you'd change from analysis to warp. Warp is the markers are the same, except you can then move them around. You can just grab them and just move them around. I'm going to do that for now. Now, if you wanted to quantize the whole song, you could just grab it, hit all, Go to your event menu to event operations, quantize, and you can just quantize all your warp markers or elastic audio events. Say 16th notes, and it just quantized all of them. Now that's quantized to 16th notes. Let me undo that for now. What you could also do is just work on section by section. Now, if you want to work section by section, you have to put a start and an end warp marker before you start moving things around. I'll show you what I mean. Like, let's say we wanted to fix this drum fill. What you want to do is you want to put a marker, or a warp marker, right here, and then one before the fill. Somewhere over here should be good. And now anything you move inside those two markers won't affect anything outside the markers. Think of it like two push pins and a rubber band. You put the push pins here and here, now you can stretch the rubber band all you want, but you don't affect the outside audio. So you move this out. And let's say we want to just quantize this, we could just grab it from here to here and quantize that. And now just the fill is quantized. Everything else stays the same. And you can do it manually too. You can just get rid of that and just move this one little hit here be right on the 20 bar 4, and the next hit one could be on 4 to 40. You can just grab that, make a new marker, and then move that to be right on the 16th note. Now you just fix those two hits only. And the nice thing about this versus B Detective is when you move these things around, you'll notice everything moves in relationship to each other. So even though this isn't quantized, Moving it around keeps everything after it in relationship to each other, so it'll sound much more natural. So if you wanted to extend this a little bit longer to make it more delayed, this would still make sense. It's a little weird because I moved it too far, but you get the idea. In Beat Detective, you'd have to actually decide where you want to put this, then this, then each hit has to be kind of either quantized or left alone. Here you have the option of moving this and keeping the other hit in relationship to where it was played. Again, let's delete all this. Go back to waveform view. Now, another thing you'll notice by the algorithms over here is you have real-time or rendered processing. If you keep it in real-time, then everything you're doing is in real-time. So your CPU is actually formulating everything that's happening. If you were to say, quantize the whole song, do that again quickly, and you want it to stay that way, you could switch it to rendered, and it will actually render that. See, it goes offline as it's waiting to do that. And it redraws them in as it happens. So it's actually writing audio to your hard disk. 
This way your CPU doesn't have to constantly figure these things out in real time. And it takes a few minutes before it does it. And anytime you want to redo any editing, you can always switch right back over here to real time again. And it goes right back. And you can start drawing your warp markers in again. Delete that for now. Now when I deleted that, it went back to our original performance here. This is the way it was originally played. But even though it's not quantized or anything's changed, you can still change the tempo of the entire song and everything will match. The way to do that is first switch your tracks from samples to ticks. That allows your tracks to act like MIDI, where changing the tempo affects where each note is placed. If you kept it in samples, nothing would change. So you switch your tracks to ticks, and then you go into your tempo changer and change it to from 86 to 96. See the whole song just moved with it. Let me undo that so you can see it better. Change it from 86 to 96. And the whole thing got faster now. The whole song is 96 now. And the sound quality is pretty good. Pretty much retains the original sound. And you could also obviously slow it down. Let's go to 80. And again, it still sounds good. So you can do your whole song, and once it's all done, you analyze all your tracks, and you can just change the tempo on the fly. Great for doing dance remixes, and great for just fine-tuning anything, really. The other thing I want to show you is elastic pitch. Let me uh, put this back to our original tempo, which was 86. And let's turn off this for now. You go to None, and it asks you if you want to commit to anything you've done. I'm going to say Revert. And that goes back to my original performance. So nothing has happened. So now let's say we want to use elastic pitch instead. We'll go to rhythmic again. Now we're going to select all the regions we want, which is everything. Hit select all. And we're going to go to region, elastic properties. And right there, pitch shift. So you can make it go higher. Let's hear that back. You can hear it sped up. But you'll notice it's right in time with the song. It hasn't sped up. Just the pitch has changed. And now we can change it to go lower. Minus two. Let's hear that back. Kind of makes the drum seem bigger, huh? I like using that every once in a while. Sometimes just on the room mics. And you can do that region by region. So let me show you that. Go back here, switch it to zero. And let's take that on my group, and let's just change our rooms and far room. Select all, and let's bring that down like five semitones. Let's hear what that sounds like. Kind of a cool effect. So you can play around with it and pretty much do anything you want with that. Let's put these back to zero again. Now you can put it back to zero that way, or you could always be back in group mode and just turn it off. None. And all the timing and pitch stuff has now disappeared. Or you can choose to commit it and then it stays that way. The only negative about committing, and I don't like to do it, is that you can't go back afterwards because it rewrites the file. That's why I prefer to use rendered processing to write the file that way. This way you can always go back and fix it later. And that's pretty much it. That's the basics of Elastic Audio. Please join me in the other videos where I'll get more specific with each instrument and each way of using Elastic Audio with Pro Tools. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in those other videos. Thanks.